Hi guys, welcome to my love and grace with Laurie holiday edition. Here we are in front of the Christmas tree in the cozy warm fire. I love it. I love it. Um, so today is a holiday message, very timely. Um, and you know, the holidays can be so stressful, you know, buying the gifts, decorating everything, trying to get everything ready and done for holiday gatherings of all kinds. And sometimes the most stressful thing can be the holiday gatherings and, um, you know, getting together with a lot of different people. There's work parties and family parties and, um, all kinds of those, those things. But today's a very timely message. It's called six ways holiday gatherings can hijack your happiness and what to do about it. And so I think what we need more of this holiday season is peace. Um, I think the peace in our hearts, we would feel so much better. Our anxiety, our stress level would go down. And so I'm going to be getting some tips on how to find that peace that you're really wanting during the holidays. And, you know, the hijackers of happiness, sometimes we think, oh, the hijackers of happiness, that's Crazy Joe or Quirky Jane, and um, just getting under our skin. And it just stresses us out to be around certain people who push our buttons. But I wanna add a disclaimer about this post. I'm talking about Crazy Joe, Quirky Jane, but I'm not talking about abusive people. I'm not talking about dangerous situations. So if that's your situation, that's not what I'm talking about. You need to make sure that you are safe. But I'm talking about people who are difficult to be around. Um, they may drive you to frustration or annoyance, but not truly abusive people. But you know, when we think of the people who are difficult in our lives, we think about what they say and do, and it's like arrows just shooting at us. And we just want to turn around and shoot right back at them. But you and I both know that's just going to make the situation worse, and it's not going to stop it. It's not going to change it. That's not how it works. But when I'm talking about difficult people in these holiday gatherings we go to, and talking about hijacking your happiness, are they the true hijackers and um but guess what the other people are not the real hijackers of our happiness oh my goodness but this is i i promise you this is going to empower you so much knowing this is this going to free you up so much um this is this is just um, going to give you lots of power and um but there will always be difficult people in our life and so we, if we expect for everyone to be kind, considerate, and caring, for us to be happy, for us to be okay, it will never happen. That's impossible. There will always be that one person or there's a couple of people who just push your buttons and get on your last nerve. And that's just a fact. People are messy. We have problems. And... The problems in our hearts just ooze out onto each other. We just do that. And so guess what? The real hijackers is in our flawed thinking, our deep insecurity and personal inclinations. And I know this guys, I am speaking from experience here. I've messed this up so much. And that's why I'm sharing it with you today because I've gotten it wrong. And so I'm sharing with you what I've learned and what is helping me get it right and have happiness, you know, feel freedom, feel peace. And so um, it's our flawed thinking, our deep insecurity and personal inclinations. And basically we operate in our human nature. It's a human nature problem. And so, and when you take into account everybody's specific personality, how our brains are wired, our past experiences, coupled with our coping strategies that we learned in order to survive from a troubled life or a young age, boom, we are some messed up people and we just, we have some flawed thinking. And so that's the real hijackers of our happiness. And so the first one, the first hijacker, I'm gonna go through six, is thinking that we can control other people. Y'all, I've gotten this so wrong. It's like hitting our head against a brick wall 
Um, sometimes I thought I could kill them with kindness or um, just win them with gifts and service or fix their idiosyncrasies, but all my efforts end up making me feel used and abused. I gave myself to people who didn't appreciate me. Do you know what I'm talking about? It was like a one-way relationship where I was pursuing them, wanting to win them. Um, and I tried to help people who didn't want my help. I tried to fix people who didn't see a problem. And I tried to reason people with who were unreasonable. Um, I was trying to change them to make myself feel better. Um, their behavior relentlessly rattled my inner peace. You know what I'm talking about when you're in a room and this person is just dominating the room or saying and doing what they do and it's just inside you are just, um, you know, a ball of yarn, just all knotted up, just all in knots. But me trying to control them repeatedly or wanting to stop them or fix or, um, it repeatedly damaged me as a person. I rejected myself in order to pursue them and it's one of my biggest struggles, which is a codependent nature. And codependent nature puts a higher value on other people, what they think, feel, and act, and just losing myself in that, trying to make another person what I needed them to be for me. But now I know that letting go of controlling someone else and looking at myself and working on myself is where the power is because the other one is just futile. Like it's impossible. You can't do it. And, um, you know, there's not enough that you can do to even help them if they don't see a problem. And so I realized if I can't do that, I'm the only person I can change. And so the problem, my hijacker was my response of thinking that I could control them or I could help them or I could fix them and um, seeing them as the problem that need a change, oh, they need a change out there. It made me feel helpless, hopeless, and hurt. And so it may be your response to what someone else is doing that is hijacking your happiness. Number two, taking responsibility for their behavior. Oh my goodness. Um, I just found myself when someone was behaving poorly in my perspective, that I was just taking on responsibility for their behavior when they were not being considerate. I was being overly considerate where they were taking advantage of people and not being helpful. I was stepping in and trying to help them. And I, you know, make, making excuses, well, you know, this or that, like I was taking on their part, taking the burden of carrying their concern on my shoulders and um, their actions, their consequences, on me, something I was never meant to carry, you know, trying to smooth over what they said to somebody else. And now I know that that's not your problem. That's not my problem. Um, it's not our responsibility to, you know, step up and take responsibility for what they're doing for their behavior and actions. I'm only responsible for my behavior and the consequences of their actions is their problem. But trying to carry their poor behavior may be hijacking your happiness. Number three, taking things personally. Oh my goodness, I've done this so much. Is the third hijacker is taking things too personally. And from a young age, you know, just growing up, when you have past experiences and hurts and things that have happened to you, um, you know, I remember being relentlessly, you know, teased picked on in gym class, well, picked on in the hallways and picked last in gym class and just being overly criticized and taking everything to heart and thinking, well, what's wrong with me? Like turning what they're doing into what's wrong with me and just taking it very personally. And the truth is what I've learned now is we all have some kind of insecurity and how other people act, how I act, how we act, is actually a reflection of our internal condition. And so if they're not behaving that way to me or on me or because of me, it's their internal reflection of who they truly are. But guess what? Same with me. My response is a reflection of my internal condition as well. 
but just to rise above your personal insecurity or those defeating thoughts that makes you think, take things too personal when somebody is just behaving the best they can, you know, from their brokenness and from their places is I was just taking things too personally and that may be hijacking your happiness. Number four, your own coping skills. Everybody has different coping skills. Some of them are healthy, not so healthy, good, bad. Um, and a lot of them are what we've learned to do when we were at a younger age. But now that we're an older age, sometimes we need to trade those coping skills in because they're not really working for us very well. For me, I have a first rate people pleasing nature that um, chases after other people for their approval and validation of my worth for their acceptance. And guys, it has only made me feel worse about myself to chase after people who didn't value me or appreciate me or respect me. I have a codependent nature. I'm working through these issues, even right now, trying to um, just, I'm alerted to them now, I'm aware of them now, so that I can work on them and I've been working on them. Um, what is codependency? Have you heard of it? Like, I didn't know that was me until fairly recently, but somewhere along the line in codependency, we learn to doubt our perception, discount our own feelings, and overlook our own needs. And we looked to others to tell us what to think, how to feel, how to behave. Other people supplied us with the information about who we were or who we should be or how things should be. And it came more important to be compliant with them, avoid it of our own selves and what we needed. And um, we just thought that if we could just get it right, things would be okay. And um, if we could just do enough, if we could be good enough, if we could love them enough or anyway, it was just all about the other person and discounting our own feelings. And so, I'm working on it, but um, now I know that these kind of coping skills that I used to use or they've become ingrained habits at my age coming up to now, that's what I used to survive back then, but right now I need new ones. They're not serving me, they're not helping me, they're not good for me. And so sometimes we need to really look at what are our coping skills, what are we doing to cope, and sometimes we resort to external um, coping skills or comforts to alleviate our stress. Things like stress, eating or drinking or just all kinds of addictions or spending money um, just to avoid the real issues to numb us from the pain that we're experiencing. We have these comforts, we have these vices, we have these coping skills. And so it may be your coping skills that are hijacking your happiness. So maybe you need to reevaluate and get new coping skills. Working on it, um, I'm doing so much better, but it's a constant effort. Number five, this one is really, really important. The fifth hijacker may be an automatic trigger. So when there is something that happens and you're triggered, and what happens is your trigger causes you to react abnormally like heightened because it's a trigger for you. So when you respond, it's not to the degree that it should be, but it's like, whoa, your response was up here. But what happened was actually maybe not as big a deal, but you're super sensitive to what was just said or what was just done. And your trigger caused you to react in a very heightened way. And so Realizing that we have triggers, which can come from unresolved issues from our past. Um, they can come from being sensitive to something that once happened to us or part of our experiences. And so um, I realized I was completely being triggered in an instant um, by someone who was behaving like this, I was like, oh, that's terrible. And I just wanted to go all mama bear on it. And with my heart, I just was like, ah, but with my head, I knew this person did not mean it maliciously. Like their intent was not malicious, but because of my past experience, it 
felt malicious to me because that's what it felt like back in my history. So now I know that to be careful in saying, is this a trigger for me? Am I being overly sensitive? Do I have unresolved hurts that can lead to abnormal reactions? So um, just realizing that you watch those triggers, are they running awry with your um, happiness? Are they hijacking your happiness? Number six, unrealistic expectations. Having unrealistic expectations. Why do I keep expecting them to change? Why do I hope for things to be different now, only to be disappointed all over again? Oh my goodness. These are all things, you guys, I have struggled with all these years. And so I'm putting together, hopefully this is speaking to some of you. I don't like it that you're in this place, but hopefully this will help you when I get on to what to do about it. Right now, we're just talking about the things that hijack our happiness. So unrealistic expectations. Why do I keep giving myself, my time, my effort and energy to people who don't value me and expect them to treat me differently? My hopes and unrealistic expectations led me down a path of disappointment and despair. I don't know why I keep desiring to be close with people who don't hold me dear. Um, I keep giving myself to people who don't appreciate me, except for the fact that my unrealistic expectations and hopes that they would become who I needed them to be. If I just kept at it, I could, I could win them. Um, next time I see them, things will be different. Like I would reason, like next time they'll listen to me, they'll treat me with respect. I excuse their behavior that I was shown and I conjured up in my mind what I wanted, what I needed, how I needed them to be. And I kept expecting unrealistic, like what should happen, what was going to happen, what I needed to happen. I kept believing in something that clearly didn't exist to the point of resentment, exhaustion, and anger. You ever been there? But now I know that expecting people to be who I need them to be is unrealistic. And, um, if you can't change someone else to be different for a different outcome, there's only one possibility, and that's to change yourself, change your expectations. And um, so that may be hijacking your happiness. Okay, here we are, what to do about it, what to do about it. This is where you are empowered right now. Number one, focus on what you can control. Focus on what you can control. Trent Shelton has this quote and I love it. But the one thing that I knew is where I didn't want to stay. And so I focused on what I could control. How many of you tire, are tired of where you have been? Man, I've stayed here in this place long enough and I don't wanna be here anymore. So now I'm gonna focus on what I can control. Anyway, Trent Shelton has a whole, um, just Facebook page, website. He helps people with self-worth. He's got some great um, advice and, and help. But your response is your power. Stop making it about them. Anytime we make it about somebody else, there's no power in that. There's only frustration and anger. The only power I have is to change myself, fix my attitude. Um, but that may be holding the power to your happiness is realizing that I need to focus on what I can control. Focus on what we can control. Number two, adjust your expectations. Accept reality, accept people for who they show you they are. Don't continue in a relationship expecting that things are gonna be different. He or she's gonna change, but gauge their character by their actions, not their words. People are who they behave to be. Things will never be perfect. And you and I have to accept the truth. So realistic expectations are the way to happiness. Number three, let God do what you cannot. Out of all of these, for me, this is the most important one. I know I have it at number three and I have more. Um, I don't know why I put it at number three, but this one is 
has helped me more times than I can count. I, I, it works. It works. I have it in here because it works. So, um, in Romans 13, 14, it says, but take up the weapons of the Lord Jesus Christ and stop paying attention to your sinful nature and satisfying its desires. Like I kept paying attention to what were they doing? You know, how upset am I? Just do, 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 with nothing I could do about but when I took up the weapons of God and started working on myself internally, y'all, this internal transformation, totally, I have the peace that I want inside my heart. Even though things around me are not going perfectly, I have peace, I have joy, I have happiness. Things are good because I work in here. And there's so many different things that we can do to work on ourselves. We can read books, we can give it our best shot, but eventually if it's not on a firm foundation, it will fail, it will fall, and I've tried other things. But me turning to God and his word for what I need, and here's what I need, here's what I mean. Because you're like, oh my gosh, the Bible's like a million pages, and there's like all this stuff. What are you even talking about? How do you do that? And here's what I do. And I've done this in so many different situations, and it just, it works, it helps. And that is, like, I'll go on my phone, and I'll just Google scriptures on peace. And literally, I will just read them out loud, you know, by myself, in my room, in my quiet time. And I'll just read them out loud as if I'm throwing them up in a prayer to God. God, I need help with peace. So I'm going to search up your word on scriptures that have to do with peace. And I'm just going to read through them. And I just want you to know, as I speak them, that's my prayer thrown up to you, God, saying, please give me peace in my heart. Um, you know, Self-control, scriptures on self-control. Confidence, scriptures on com comfort. Whatever it is I feel like I'm lacking or I feel like I need. Courage, I look them up and you know, you can do this for just a matter of minutes. You know, three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever you're needing before you go to that holiday gathering. This is proactive. You're doing it to prepare your heart, to prepare your peace before you even show up. Take a few minutes, look on the computer or your phone or open up your Bible and find the scripture that you need to hold on to your peace, to hold on to your happiness before you even show up to the gathering. And so this is my most important um, tip and help is to let God do a work in your heart that you cannot do. And um, this is the biggest transformation and also, if you would like a free copy of some scripture, um, I will have a link attached to my blog. And so if you end up going to my blog, it's like, ooh, I want the free scripture delivered to my email. Um, you can have that so that you can have it. You can read it right before you go to your gathering. Number four, make a mantra. A mantra is like a word or phrase that you repeat in order to concentrate or focus on like what you want, what you're going for, to just keep your focus in what you believe and in a positive direction so you don't get off track. And so there's one mantra that they call the three C's of addiction recovery. And I know we're not exactly talking about addiction, but oh my goodness, they're good for everybody in life, for everything. Um, and that is the three C's are smart for everyone. And they go like this. I didn't cause it. I can't cure it. And I can't control it. It's just empowering words, realizing what's out of my control, what's in my control. Like I didn't cause them to be this way. And I can't cure them. I can't control them. So it's kind of like I didn't cause what's going on over there. I can't cure it. I can't control it. Let them be them. And that helps put the focus back on me. What I can help, what I can control, what I can work on. But anyway, a good mantra helps you stay focused in um, what you'll do, what you won't do. Um, I went to some AA meetings with some friends, um, just kind of support them. And one lady, she kept on saying, it's not my business. Like she would talk about a situation and she's like, I just had to tell myself, it's not my business. And so that was her mantra that kept her on track to say, you know what, what they're doing over there is not my business. It's not my business. So that's another example of a mantra. It might be, let it go. 
I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go. So what will your mantra be? It's something that you just repeat to keep yourself focused on what you should focus on, what you can do, what you can control. Number five, building boundaries. And boundaries are for yourself, not for another person, because you can't control what they're going to do, but you can say, I'm not going to go down that path. I'm going to, you know, behave in this kind of character. I'm not going to, you know, stay and listen to this. I might have to get up and walk away. I might have to take a break. It might be limiting the time that you spend with people, evaluating your motives before you tell somebody, yes, I'll do that. Making sure in your heart that's really what you want to do and that's right for you. Or maybe giving yourself permission to say no and not feeling guilty about it. Maybe that's a boundary. You're like, I need to learn to say no but I have a hard time and I feel guilty, maybe the boundary is, you know what? I'm gonna be able to say no and not feel guilty no matter what they do, that's a boundary I have. I'm gonna give myself that permission, that power. And so um, just finding the boundaries that are good for you, that are healthy for you, and you have a right to make your own boundaries. But if you haven't had boundaries before with these people who you're gonna start having boundaries with, they're gonna be upset, they're not gonna like it. So stick with it, do what's right for you, do what's good for you, um, what's best for you. But healthy boundaries are the way to happiness. Number six, acquire al allies. When you go to these holiday gatherings, you need to have one or two allies. You need to have some allies, some people who are with you, some people who, when you look across the room, they're like, I got you, I got you, who smile at you, encourage you. And so allies um, are not against anybody else. They're just there to support, encourage you to stick to your boundaries, to make sure that you stick with your plans, to encourage, to be that smiling face in the room. And so you don't feel quite so alone. And so trustworthy allies at your gatherings is the way to happiness. Number seven, and this is the last one, and it is be done. Be done. You need to be done with your old way of doing things when you've gone to the holiday gatherings and it's frustrated you, it's angered you. It's like the same thing every year at the, you know, work Christmas party, Ugh, the same people causing you grief, but you've been doing the same things because you didn't know all of these ways to stop doing the old way. And now you have tips on what to do in the new way. And you just need to be done. Be done with giving their behavior the power to frustrate you, to ruin your peace and joy this year. Be done with obsessing about what they did in the past or what they might do at this next gathering, you know, the dread you feel like, oh, I don't want to go. Man, prepare yourself with that scripture. Man, get your mantra and start running it. Start playing it through your mind. You know, grab your allies, build your boundaries, you guys. Put in the work and the preparation before you go. But you've got to be done and saying, I don't want to live like this anymore. I don't want to have the same attitude. I don't want to have the same frustration. I don't want the holidays to be so stressful, so you've got to be done with the own way. Being done is the way to happiness. So it pays to be proactive in this situation. It pays to know your triggers, to look at your coping skills and see if they're still working for you, if they're not. Um, so we need to prepare. We need to be proactive. So... I hope this spoke to you some, some of you today and um, if you could relate to any of this. And I just wish you the happiest of holidays so that the hijackers don't come and steal away your peace and steal away your joy. Um, I know that can be very discouraging and um, just frustrating. And so I hope that this helped you. Um, you can go to my contact form if you want that scripture that I talked about or feel free to email me with any other questions or anything that you want to tell me. My contact form is on the blog post and the website for the blog post is mylovinggrace.com. And so if you go to mylovinggrace.com, 
there's all kinds of helpful other blog posts that you can go to that might speak to you um, in some way or help you or tell your friends about it and maybe they would want to come check it out. I have videos, I have written blogs, and I actually have a section with poems and prayers that I've, ones that I've coming up.